Hey guys, it's me, it's me, it's Mates December, it's me. And I'm back once again with another overview video. These videos are mental. I tell you, I've probably done about six hours worth so far, and we're only just getting started. So, as the title says, this is the Blu ray overview of my Asian film collection, which means basically it's got martial arts movies. Asian movies, but all in Asia. So, for instance, let's say Jet Li. Jet Li movie, like, for instance, like The Legend, is in Asia, an Asian movie. Uh, one like Quilter well, Graves and American movie, so that's going to be in the action movies coming up next. See what if you know what I mean? So, in case you wonder why isn't this in action, why is this in this one? Because they're made in Asia, and I thought I'd just put an Asian section. <sighs> Please look. See? There's my Asian section. So, I thought it cuts off a whole load of different genres then as well, you know? So, let's get started. First up, we have a nice, lovely slipcover and an embossed title. We've got Switch. Andy Law stars in this. I recently got this in the post from Amazon, so I can't really say much about it because I haven't watched it yet. You know, and as I always say, like a broken record, do, 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 do. I plan to. <laughs> then next on the radar, we've got The Thieves, which is a Korean movie, which I've never seen either, but I own. A lot of these I might not have seen, so excuse me for that, but I'm just showing you because I got a lot of recently in over time. Over the last year, I bought quite a few of these, and I've never seen them. So I just haven't had the time because I've been trying to watch stuff that most people have watched, you know, like other people have asked me to watch like Nightmare Beach and Death Smile and stuff like that, you know. I've been taking requests and watching them really, so Harakiri the remake, which you saw in the uh Criterion collection uh Blu ray. I, I really wanted to get this. I had this on in England for three ninety nine, three pound ninety nine it cost me in England. And I never watched it and I sold it. And I never got a chance to watch it, so I don't know if it's good or bad. Show you and fat and hard boiled. I love this film. It's so action packed and it's one of the great John Woo, John Woo movies starring uh Show you and Fat and Anthony Wong. There's a beautiful scene in it when the play, the hospital's blowing up and he's got hold of the baby and he goes like, oh, gotcha, gotcha, go. And the baby goes, ah, ah. It's just really good. I really like that scene. That's my favorite scene in the whole movie. The shootouts in this movie are excellent and it's such a fun, action packed movie, but I really, really enjoyed it. Some of my favorite chain and fat movies. Police Story 1 and 2. I always was a fan of Police Story 1, but never 2. They're both really good. They're both really good, but I like number one better. I like a lot of Jay Chan's earlier work, as you'll see in this video. Police Story basically is him trying to stop this criminal. And Police Story 2 goes around in the bomb, I think. I can't remember. Election, which is a triad movie uh, set in Hong Kong. This is a Hong Kong release. And it's really good because it's about who's going to be the new leader, basically, and take over. And it's like a war between the two guys in the actual uh, tribe. And it's like one-upmanship. It's a very smart film. I've got Election 2 as well, which I'm going to show as well uh, later. Uh, and it's just as smart. But it stars Lewis Koo in that one with uh, Simon Yam. It's very smart. These two, if you want a smart mobster movie, you have to try Election, one and two. You can get Election, Volume 2, Blu-ray, not Blu-ray, uh, DVD and CEX for 25p. Mm -hmm. And you can get number one for 50p on DVD. Moran 2, which is a Thai film from, from the 1980s. I never even knew this film existed until I picked it up in the store. So, I haven't watched it yet, but I'm planning on watching it soon. You know? The best martial arts film of this decade. It says it was made in 1984. 
It seems a bit weird, and it's not Thai, so it's Indonesian. Robin B. Hood. This is a great comedy starring two folks, Lewis Coe and uh, Jackie Chan, looking after a baby. It's like two men and a little baby, except instead of three, it's two. And basically, they fall in love with a baby and end up fighting for it and all this. And it's a, it's a really lovely, touching film. It's like, to me, it's just like three men and a little baby, basically, like I just said. Except with two guys, basically. Tai Chi Master. It's done Michelle Yeoh and Jet Li. Uh, Jet Li gets upset because his brother who trains with in the Shane Temple goes on the evil side. And he basically goes into a deep depression. And there's a new kind of kung fu and basically beats him in the end. This is a good film. It's not one of my favourites, but it's good. It's okay, you know, it's... It's, 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 it's your average martial arts film. It's got a lot of good action here, a lot of wire work. And I'm not very keen on wire work. Winners and Sinners. Now, I love these comedy films from uh, Hong Kong. I had these, last time I had these, I had these on VHS, and then I had them on DVD from Hong Kong Legends. And Hong Kong Legends went out of business, so all their DVDs were worth fortune. So I sold them a movie here. But I've got the Blu-rays from Hong Kong. Winners and Sinners has got basically Jackie Chan's in it, not so much, but he has cameos in it, and so does Yoon Byo in Winners and Sinners in the My Lucky Stars films. And basically it's more on Sammo and the bands, a group like Richard Neg and, and that, the group there, what you see right there, basically. And it's just comedy, basically. It's just comedy with a little bit of a story in there. And there's like this evil genius played by James Tien, and basically they stop him, basically. Dragons Forever, another uh, Hong Kong Blu-ray I bought. Uh, this is probably my favourite Jackie Chan film of all time. It's got the three dragons in it. Um, Sammo Hung, Jackie Chan and Yun Byo. And it's got the best story, the best music score and everything. Basically, uh, Yun Byo is mentally ill, basically, and he's got problems. Uh, Sammo Hung is a con man. And Jackie Chan is a lawyer. And they all basically end up coming together and having, you know, wild antics as well as stopping an evil drug lord. There's a great fight between Jackie Chan and Benny Yacudez, the kickboxer. Um, and, you know, I really like the film. This film is amazing. I think this is J. Chan's best film. If no one's, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you search it out and find it and watch it. Uh, whether it's Blu-ray, DVD or VHS is up to you, but it's a really good film. Wheels on Mills, another Hong Kong uh, Blu-ray release, starring the Three Dragons, Yun Biu, Sammo Hung and Jackie Chan. This is set in Spain, and basically Yun Biu and Jackie run a uh, food cart kind of thing, but you know, like a food van, where they sell food and they go about on skateboards and they meet this young Spanish girl. And they both kind of fall for her, and it turns out that there's this conspiracy. And it's got Benny Aquides in it again, going against Jackie Chan, which is actually quite funny. It's a very comedic film. And basically, the girl's mother and Jackie's father fall in love, and they basically end up stopping this evil crime guy who likes doing fencing, basically. It's a bit strange. Um, Samo plays a private detective, but it's a great film. It's a great film, but it's not one of my favourites. Millionaire's Express, a.k.a. Shanghai Express. This film has a whole load of famous people in it. It has, uh, it has uh, Cynthia Rothrock, Richard Norton, Samo Hung, uh, uh, Yun Byo, Anita Mu, Eric Zhang, uh, Yasuo Takia. There's loads of them, and they all have different roles in it. And it's a mad fight here between Samo and uh, Cynthia Rothbard, where she kicks his butt and he looks at her and he's kind of like all squinty. And it's just funny because it's a great scene. Uh, this is one of those best films. It's like watching like a re it's like watching a film where you want all the players to be in it, and that's what this is basically. It's a great film. Tiger Cage starring Donnie Yen. Basically, in this, he get, it says the internal police unit leads to betrayal and murder, brutal fight scenes, Michael Woods and Donnie Yang, 
no star cast. This is another good Donnie Yen film. See, the problem with Donnie Yen is Donnie Yen's a great martial artist, and now, and now he's in his 40s, like late 40s. He's only starting to be recognised. In the 80s, he was doing great movies, and nobody really bothered with him. And it's crazy when you think about it, because he's just as good as anybody else. Um, so it's a real shame. I mean, he had some films in the US, like Highlander Endgame and Blade 2, but he didn't do anything in them. Not really. So he didn't even get to showcase anything. So it was kind of annoying. But if you watch the old 80s, I mean, this came out in 1988. You know, and he started getting basically noticed in, I would say, mid 2000s. So, you know, I mean, he had good films, Phil knew it, but he only got his career really higher, you know, since then. Another classic Chang and Fat film, The Killer, where he's a hired assassin who, acts to, who, who makes a mistake and basically the tri the trial are after him. And he he try he made this girl blind, well this woman blind, and he falls in love with her, and so does Danny Lee. And basically, yes, played by Sally Yeah. And basically they both want to protect her, and they both call each other Mickey Mouse and that. And they both end up shooting out together and basically Danny Lee's supposed to sign, but they kind of become friends. It's a very uh it's a very touching story, and it's actually one of those stories where you have the old kind of story where where the good guy and the bad guy actually have a lot in common and they become friends, which is kind of rare nowadays, you know, properly in films. Probably one of my favourite, probably my favourite Korean film of all time, A Bit of Sweet Life. It's told by, basically it's told to, he's part of the, uh, whatever they're called, the gang in there, and basically he's meant to keep an eye on her and tell the guy if she's having an affair. Well, she's having an affair, but he doesn't tell him. And basically they hunt him down, they torture him and everything. And he ends up going after him and that. And it's a good film. Uh, it, I, it was so good, I imported this coffee book, which is rare and limited edition, which is worth $400 now. Yeah, $400. Uh, and it's got art cards inside. Let me see. So it's got art cards inside. Well, postcard things. But the problem with it is, you guessed it, the problem is for it's all in Korean. Not the film, the book. So it's a bit annoying, but I can live with that. But the film itself has English subtitles in it and it's beautiful. Veroni Kenshin, the movie, imported from the UK. Now, it's funny because Asia got a release of this, but America didn't get a release of this on Blu-ray at all. So I had to import it from the US because it's region free because it's Warner Brothers. But I haven't watched it yet. I plan to watch it soon because I'm a big Real Only Kenshin fan, aka Samurai X, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, I'm a big fan of it. Another Donnie Yen film, Special ID. Now, again, I haven't seen this film, but this is his newest film out at the minute, over here anyway. And uh, to myself, I'm a big Donnie Yen fan. I think he's got amazing skills. I think he's a good fighter. And he's in a lot of films. I mean, he was in a lot. He was in a couple of Jet Li films, like Once Upon a Time Trying the Toe and stuff. And, you know. Another Donnie Yen film, Seven Souls. See, the point of Donnie Yen is he's not very noticeable in films. And then all of a sudden, because you look at him, you go, oh, it's a Donnie Yen film, you know. I've never seen Seven Souls, but I've always wanted to, and I picked this up for like three dollars. But it's two hours and thirty-three minutes long. For a martial arts film, that's a bit <laughs> over the top. The Protector, starring Tony Jaa. I uh, I love these Thai films. I love how action-packed they are with the whole special effects, but you know, there's no wire stuff. I really like it, and I love the way he moves. Uh, but the problem is, a lot of these haven't got any real substance. All they've got is kicking and flying and crazy manoeuvres, you know. But I do like them. I like them a lot. And to find out, and I found out about Onk back is finally coming out in the USA properly on Blu-ray, which means I'll be able to pick them up to complete the Protector set. Plus, there's the Protector 2 coming out soon. So, 
I'm looking forward to that. Then we've got the young master. Basically, Jackie Chan leaves his dad and goes on to find, end up meeting this bloke, and he ends up getting, he ends up getting confused with another guy, and he ends up living with this old man who's the, who's the dad of Yun Bio, who are both police officers, and end up fighting a bloke. He ends up finding a bloke at the end and taking him back in town. It's just, it's just a feel-good movie, you know. Jackie Chan always did great martial arts movies in the seventies and eighties. Basics <laughs> Chamber of Shaolin. Now I've never seen this film before, and when I finally watched it, I can understand why it's called one of the Godfathers of uh, Kung Fu films. Because it's not just a Kung Fu film, but it's a learning lesson of life uh, through the Shaolin Temple, and it's just really amazing to see how dedicated Golden Lou was to the to the role and. How, and how it meant to him, because there was two other sequels, uh, proper sequels. There was Return to 36 Chamber of Shaolin, and there was The Disciples of 36 Chamber of Shaolin. And there was uh, 36, 36 Chamber of the Final Countdown, but it wasn't an official release, um, you know, of the film series. So. Assault Girls, a 70 minute movie about absolutely nothing. They're playing a game in a virtual world and killing each other, and there's weird dancing. There's hardly ever any talking in it. It's just, you just watch us now for like 10 minutes going across the floor. It's a terrible movie. I'm glad I only go for $5. Oh, look at this. I missed it. And my other one, and my TV one, Doctor Who and the Doctor, the Widow, and the Wardrobe. I really like this one, actually. This Christmas special was probably the best one I've seen out of all the Matt Smith ones. I really liked it a lot. I'm just saying it because it's in there. <sighs> Crime Story and The Protector. Now, The Protector I'd never seen before. When I watched it, I really didn't like it. It's kind of like Hong Kong uh, Jackie meets, meets New York with a cop, and it's not that great. To be honest with you, it's not really a good Jackie Chan film at all, but it was a tester for what it'd be like in... American. This was before you hit Big Day. And this one, and Crime Story was not a bad film. Uh, I don't remember it very clearly, but I remember it being quite action packed and quite a lot of fun. Again, Battle Creek Brawl was another let's try what it'd be like in America again, and, it kind of, and that kind of failed again as well. But City Hunter is one of my favourite Jackie Chan films. There's so much going on in this film. He's a private detective, and basically his friend gets murdered, and he promises to look after her, after his niece, and she turns out to look like this all the time. So he kind of goes, ooh, and all this. And there's a lot of sexual innuendo in it and everything, because it's City Hunter, based on the manga. And uh, he ends on a boat, and terrorists do it, and it turns into a street fighter and everything. It's just a really amazing film. It's one of my favourite Jackie Chan films, so I had to buy the Blu-ray. I could have bought the Asian one, but to most of you, I wanted the dub, because the dub makes it better. Because the dub's so silly, and it's got Richard Norton as the main villain. So, The remake of A Better Tomorrow. Now, I watched this film, it's, it's Korean, I think. Yeah, it's Korean, and its original was, in chi was Chinese. Um... It was all right, but I didn't like they changed the scenes. Like they changed the famous restaurant scene into a massage bar place, and it just sucks. The, this is good for what it is, but it's not. It's not a fantastic remake by any standards. Of the main, it's good if you don't think of it as a remake. It's all right, but if you watch it thinking, "Oh, this is a remake of a better tomorrow," one of the best films in uh, tried history. Uh, you're in for a mistake because it's crap in that aspect. But if you don't, then it's not a bad film. Highly disappointing. I'm a big, big A Better Tomorrow fan. Then we've got... Oh, hello. The One-Armed Swordsman starring Jimmy Wang Yu. Now, I haven't seen this yet. This is a Japanese release. Um, but I haven't seen this yet, so I can't say anything. And I've got the return of the one arm, one arm swordsman. Now I picked both of these up on eBay, luckily, 
for nineteen dollars each and to be honest they were worth it for me because I was on about to important. Two more that I haven't seen yet, Takeshi Kitano movies and that's Beyond and Beyond Outrage, so Outrage and Beyond Outrage. Uh, they both follow, one follows the other and to be honest with you, I really want to watch them, I just haven't made the time. I have to be in the mood to watch a subtitled film, you know. I can't just go, oh, I'll watch a subtitled film, I have to be in the mood for it. Because the mood is everything, you know. Invisible Target starring J.C. Chan, Jackie Chan's son, who I never knew even existed until I watched this film. This has some of the best action scenes in the film, and it's great. I love this film. I think this film's awesome. I haven't watched it in a while, um, but I'm looking forward to watching it again at some point. The whole story is amazing. It's fun. It's explosive. You've got martial arts. You've got action. You've got everything you really want out of an Asian movie, you know, an Asian martial arts movie. It's awesome. Legend of the Scorpion. Uh, yeah, another film that I haven't seen, but I've heard good things about. Um, Dragon Dynasty released some good films, so I'm guessing it's good. It's got some martial arts in it and that, which is always good, so. Jet Li's epic classic, The Legend. Now, this film, I, I originally watched this on Sky Movies with my name years ago. Me and I used to watch all the Jackie Chan films together, the, not Jackie Chan, Jet Li films together on Sky Movies, because they had them on every now and again. And I ended up buying the DVDs. This is so long ago now, it makes me feel really old. But I used to, we bought the DVDs, like the Defender, Fist of the Legend, the Legend 1 and 2, uh, the Defender, you know, stuff like that. Um, the Enforcer, you know, and I really loved them. And I remember never thinking, I never thought they'd come out on Blu-ray, because back then I never thought Blu-ray. And number two isn't released on Blu-ray yet, but number one is. I'm hoping to release number two soon. But the story basically involves a rebellion and Manchu killing the rebellions, and basically Jet Li becomes one of them because he's the famous Fong Sai Yuk. And uh, he's got a really silly mother, which is always great. His mother really adds to it. And there's this story about him getting with the daughter and his mother falling in love with the her mother who pretends to who thinks uh, Jet Li's mother in the film is a man. It's just amazing. It's a good film. It's funny and it's very well actioned and very well paced. I really like it. The Heroic Ones, which is a Shaw Brothers film, but I haven't seen it. I'm gonna get through some of these now. The Stall Pigeon. Another film I've never seen, but I've always fancied watching. Infernal Affairs is a cult classic. It's one of the greatest uh, tribe movies of all time. You have to watch the trilogy. It's like the Godfather trilogy, except there's three more films of this like this. Two more, anyway, to make it a trilogy. And it's just as good as the Godfather 2, but in Asia. Um, I was a bit upset by the fact that England released all three on Blu-ray in a cheap set, but... America releases just the first one. They've got Jackie Chan Kung Fu Master, which I've never seen. Yip Man, which is another amazing film about the man who basically taught Bruce Lee. And to be honest, Yip Man is a really good film about a man who doesn't want to fight. He's a very peaceful, loving man, but when he needs to fight, he does. And it's the type of guy you want to be in the fact that He's so patient and he's so understanding, so caring and very disciplined, you know. Um, I just like the film. Flashpoint. Now, this is one of Donnie Yen's best films because he's not only action-packed, but he's a great actor. And I can't really remember the story, but I remember really liking this movie really much and really thinking it was awesome. Twin Dragons. Interesting story about this. Years ago, when they sold VHSs in, you know, in um, like the little corner shops, in the little boxes for like five quid, I had a choice. It was either pick this film up or pick up Once Were Warriors, the New Zealand film. Now, I remember going through it and checking and being like, oh, what one, what one, what one? And I picked up Once Were Warriors. And my mum said, oh, you shouldn't have picked that up. And I shouldn't have done, really. 
But once the Warriors blew my mind senseless. If anyone's seen that, they'll know what I mean. It's it's a it's a film about Maoris and about respect and stuff, and it's so disturbing, but it's also really really great. But yeah, Twin Dragons. Jackie Chan's got one brother who's a musician and one one who's a bit of a troublemaker basically, and they both get confused, and it's basically your usual twin hijinks. Little Big Soldier. Basically, Jay Chan ends up fighting a younger bloke and they end up going to war because they're on separate sides. And basically, they end up teaming up together, basically. It's all right, movie. Triple Tap. I've never seen this, but I saw Double Tap. And Double Tap is an amazing film, and this is like the sequel. So, hopefully, this will be just as good. Double Tap's where you shoot a gun and you hit a person in the same place exactly with, the same, with two bullets. Blade of the Kings, aka Twins Effect 2. Yeah, Twins Effect 2. I saw Twins Effect 1 and that was really silly. And I'm looking forward to seeing Blade's Effect 2, aka Blade of the Kings. Blade of Kings. Yeah, so I always had a thing for Gillian Chun. Look at her, she's so beautiful. Oh. Oh, yeah. Then we've got the Once Upon a Time in China trilogy. Now, these three films are all about Westerners trying to take over Asia. Especially number one, where they start off with the dragon dance. And he pulls out the fan, the general bloke. He goes, and then at the beginning he goes, Wang Fei, Wang Fei, Hang Ye Long. Chi cha chi cha wa fa me. Chi cha we ya shi ma li ma diki yiki. Shi ya fa li ai mai ai hai. Cha yai hai hai. But yeah, uh, in the first one, he goes against the rough bloke and Yun Bu plays. Um, oh, who does he play? I'm trying to get right. But he plays somebody. Let's see, let's see, is it there? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it's going to tell me. But he plays somebody, a fun or something. And he's alright, but he's nowhere as good as the second guy. And that's surprising considering his view, you know. Yun Bu is an amazing actor, an amazing martial artist. But sadly, he never became as big as Sammo or Jackie. I think a big part of that was because he was different. But he became a big, massive star in Japan when it came to dramas, which always seems really strange, but, you know. So basically, the first one was all right. The second one basically goes against the cult of uh, people. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, that's it, the Sun Yud set. And basically the bloke says he can't be harmed by blades. And basically uh, Wong Fei Hung beats him in the end and says something. Then in this, they, they're fighting for supremacy because the Russian, the Russian guys are hoping to kill the emperor. And basically he goes back to visit his dad and to try and win a competition between the skulls. And it becomes this big massive rivalry between them all, basically. And in the end, Wong Fei Hung wins. I love Wong Fei Hung. I love I love Jet Li as Wong Fei Hung. You know, Wong Fei Wong Fei Hung Long. Okay, next part. Naked Weapon, a Wong Jin movie. It's really nice with you. I really like this movie. It starts Maggie Q, and basically what happens is they're, they're, they're orphans, and they're brought up in this special camp where basically they're killed if they fail, basically. And they become super assassins. They go out killing people, and Daniel Wu falls in love with Maggie, Maggie Q uh, before, which is funny because they actually were a couple, and then they split up. And uh, basically they get all captive, and then basically they end up to fight this bloke. And he kills her girlfriend, I guess. And that's it, really. There's not much to it other than that. 
you know. Tiger Cage 2, aka Donnie the Yen on the loose. In this, he basically fights again. He's a copper, and you know he's got to save against the foreign bloke who's white. You know, white people were trouble in the eighties and nineties in Asia. Black Mask gently puts on the black mask because he's a especially altered uh, human assassin, and he goes against his own kind basically, while also being chased around by Karen Mock, who's I think a nerdy librarian kind of person. It's interesting. It's not that good. It wasn't my favorite jelly. I kind of got bored of it the first time I watched it. And there's a Black Mask 2, but I've never seen it. <laughs> Hallelujah. New Play Story. Now, I don't know how many more Play Stories there's going to be, because there's been Play Story 1, 2, 3. There was First Strike, which was officially called Play Story 4 in some areas. Then there's a new police story, and now there's police story 2013, which is the newest one. And to be honest with you, I really enjoyed the film. I enjoyed the fact that he became a drunk, and that he felt like he'd lost everything. I love it wasn't just a comedy, but there were some laugh out loud bits in it. But he was a distraught person who was suffering from what had happened, like when his old team got killed and stuff. And to be honest with you, I find that to make this more of a film, more of a good story. And I like the characters in them are so well. And Daniel Wu plays a fantastic villain, nerdy kind of villain uh, person, you know. He's excellent. I like Daniel Wu. Then we've got from Asia, Yes Madam from Hong Kong on Blu-ray. Yes Madam stars Cynthia Rothrock and Michelle Yeoh before she got older. And it's basically a tag team partners. And we're trying to stop this uh, these gangsters. And there's some really amazing fights in it. Sue Hart's in it as well as a nerdy bloke, which is always good to see because he's an amazing director and also a good bit of talent. And basically, Cynthia Rothrock is your West, typical Westerner. She's come over and then we'll show you a fight together. And I think they're trying to stop James Tien, if I'm right. I can't really remember, but I think they are. And you got the bloke with the big moustache, he's famous. I can't remember what his name is. But he's always in a McCurry and a moustache. Then you got My Father is a, My Father is a Hero, aka the Enforcer in England and America. Um, again, this is a Hong Kong import. Basically, Jet Li is an undercover policeman. He ends up meeting Blackie Co. And Blackie Co introduces him to this group of bad guys. And there's this bit where they find his son and they strangle his son. And thankfully, and his wife is really ill as well. And basically, he tells him, the son holds his breath and he runs back. It's just amazing. To be honest with you, this is one of Jet Li's best movies, in my view. There's some real meaning to it, and it's also very exciting. And it's also quite scary because you worry about the little boy because he gets because he's being old and he's choking and stuff. And it's just awesome. I highly recommend this if you ever get the chance. In England, in England, America, it's called The Enforcer. And over in Hong Kong, it's called My Father is a Hero. Oh, shite. I'll put it in this one. Uh, Turning Point is a tried movie, which doesn't make much sense. There's many when Anthony Wong goes, Oh, I was a police officer and I became a member of the tried, and now I'm one of the top guys. And you're like, What? Surely that can't really happen in reality. Surely you won't be allowed to be because they think you are undercover, you know? Chow Yun Fat and Alan Tang in Flaming Brothers. Basically, they are two guys in the mob, in the tribe, basically, and they end up fighting a whole gang, basically, and they end up ending it with a Sundance. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance key kind of ending. <sighs> But it's an awesome film. It's an awesome tried film. If you like gangster films, some of the best films are in Asia. Tiger on the Boat. Show you fat is in the comedy thing. He's having an affair with a guy's wife. And he almost gets caught and he leaves. And then he finds he's got his new partner is Conan Lee. T Long is in this as a bartender, which is always good to see. Conan Lee is basically the big martial arts muscly guy. And 
it, it's, really, it's kind of like a mixture of comedy and serious. Golden Lou is in it with a chainsaw, which is great. It's always good to see Golden Lou because he's a genius and he's an amazing actor and a great piece of talent. Uh, the ending's pretty good and the actual film itself really goes on. You've also got uh, Philip Coe in this as well. It's not in it very long, but he's in it. And Philip Coe, if Bill watched many of these films, they'll know what I'm talking about. In the Line of Duty. This is another Donnie Yen film. In the Line of Duty 4, sorry. This is another Donnie Yen film. It turns out Michael Wong's evil and basically has to fight against him and save him. And it's, to be honest, it's a very good film. I love Donnie Yen's action scenes. I think he's very fluid and very exciting. And he really gets, he really gets the heart pounding. You're like, oh, wow, this is, I wish I could do this. And you're like this, wah, 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 you know? Twinkle, Twinkle, Lucky Stars, another one in the Winners and Sinners kind of uh, formula. You've got a little bit of Yun Bio, you've got a little, little bit of Andy Lott, and a little bit of Jackie Chan at the beginning, and then you see him a little bit later on, but you've got the, basically the My Lucky Stars group being pervy and trying to see a naked woman, trying to do stuff like that. And to be honest, it's a good film. It's, uh, it's one, again, it's not one of my favourite films, because I like Asian films, obviously. And this is one of my top ones. I've watched this over and over again. Five Element Ninjas, now rare and deleted on Blu-ray, which is really weird. Because of all the films, I wouldn't have expected this to be one of them, you know? Uh, to be deleted. Um, this is one of the greatest Shaw Brother Ninja films I've ever seen. I love how they use the elements really well. Like, uh, uh, there'll be a ninja in the tree and the arms will pop out and kill the person. Or uh, they're in the walk and they jump out and get them. And it's just an amazing, amazing, amazing film. Uh, ninja film. You know, don't get very many good ninja films. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's loads out there, but you don't see many of them. Especially Asian ones. Spooky Encounters of the Third Kind. Spooky Encounters. Basically, Spooky Encounters is basically about a guy who ends up getting spooked and ends up with loads of ghosts who fights and all sorts of stuff. It's a good film, uh, but it's not one of my favourite uh, semi hung movies. But I'll click this so. one. We've got the Lone Wolf and Cub movies, which again are rather than deleted now. Uh, I love them all. The only problem I have with the Lone Wolf and Cub series is there was no true ending. And I would have loved to have seen the true ending because that's the only problem with the set. Um, but there's no ending, there's no real. Um, Problem, you know, you want a full ending. Now, in my view, the ending should have happened in the last one in the snowy mountains. It was a perfect place to end it. Blood all over the snow, and him looking and him kind of being relieved, and then him maybe coming Harry Carey with his son or something. You know what I mean? I don't know, but it would have made it better. I tell you something, I feel so tired. I can't believe it. it's only 1:19 a.m. and I feel so tired. Mad Detective is about a schizophrenic uh, detective who's got more personality syndrome and basically talks to himself and stuff. And that's all I remember about it, sadly, because I haven't seen it in ages. So, another Hong Kong movie, The Legend of Speed. I bought this on DVD years ago in a faulty uh, DVD thing from uh, Asia because I was a big Aiken Cheng fan, this guy here. And uh, I didn't know what to expect. And basically, he's a racer, and he starts off in racing and winning, and basically he bets a race with this guy, but he breaks his leg. And he breaks the guy's leg, and the brother, the guy's brother comes out of jail. And basically, he takes revenge, basically, and he goes up against him, and he loses the race, and he crashes. Well, his girlfriend, his girlfriend uh, ends up dead, and he ends up in a real thing. So uh, some of the people he does with end up in trouble and end up dying. He ends up befriending the girl of um, the boy. Uh, I can't remember her name. And basically they kind of get redemption. But why is why is in the why is he escaped and he's looking for his dad, Blackie Co. Uh, the guy who got out of prison's brother who not, originally broke his leg has got a needle full of AIDS that he's going to try and hit him with, but he misses and ends up getting it in his leg. So he ends up getting A's and everything, which is actually, it's funny, but it's not funny. It's funny because it's a stupid thing to do, 
but it's not funny in the fact that it's a serious condition. Um, and basically, it, black your code, guys. It's just upsetting, but it's great to see it. You have this real feeling of like uh, redemption and finding yourself, you know? Another one, Combo, he expects us to wear skirts. Now, I watched this in England on VHS called Top Squad, and I watched it uh, dubbed, and the dubbing is completely different to the movie. Uh, there's this bit where it starts from the beginning where there's this terrorist in black clothing, basically like ninjas. And Cynthia Rothrock and what's her name? That's it. Uh, that's it. Where is it? Where are you? 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 I can't find it. But anyway, she, uh, they stop them and then they end up, they, she ends up being a recruit. Recruit and basically they're teaching these women to basically be teamwork and to care for each other. It's got Sandra Neg in it, and there's some really funny scenes like in the nightclub where they're dancing and they're playing crab. And there's this guy who keeps trying to charm her, and he sings an Elvis Presley song. And the action in it's really good, but the comedy is better. I actually enjoy this as a comedy film more than an action film because it shows how what it's like to go from be having nobody to actually caring about each other. There is an Inspector Wear Skirts 2 and 3. I've never seen it and I've never been able to get the DVDs. But, because it's not on Blu ray, but I would like to see them. A Better Tomorrow. Probably my favourite movie of all time when it comes to tried movies. It's got great music score, got the great scene of the restaurant, um, great scene at the end with all the fighting, uh, where Mark comes back and he gets shot in the head when he holds. Um, what's his name? Leslie Chung's head and says he's your brother, show him respect, and then he gets shot and his blood spurts all over him. It's a really good scene, very powerful film. Uh, T Lone goes to prison, and he was like the boss, and he goes to prison and he becomes a cab driver. And Mark, because he got shot in the leg, becomes more like a um, car cleaner and a valet kind of thing who eats rough. And it's kind of like, you know, we've gone from the big time to the lower time. And the little guy who was with him becomes the big, big guy. And instead of helping him, he turns out he's a real evil bastard who tries to kill him. And basically, they fight back. You've got uh, Leslie Chung, who's the police officer, who never agreed with what they did. You know, it's a very, very amazing film. Um, very smart and very clever. And it's a John Woo film. What do you expect? Uh, I've, I've seen number two. Didn't like number two that much. I've never seen number three, but I plan to get them both on Blue Eye eventually. Right and wrongs, where um, Yun Bu is framed for murder and Cynthia Rothrock's looking for him. And basically, this film had like seven different cuts, depending on what DVD or what VHS you bought and what from what territories. So nobody really knows what the real ending is to the film. And basically, in the end, Yun Bu and Cynthia Rothrock work together and they find out it was the police commissioner and they have to stop him. Bit of a silly ending, but it's it's a good film overall. The action is amazing. Hitman. Hitman stars basically Jet Li as basically this really nice guy who wants to be a hitman. Basically works for this hitman group, and it's too nice to kill people. And he meets Eric Sang, and Eric Sang says it uh, at this convention thing for getting the person to get the um. To kill, what was his name? Uh, well, whoever he is, it's something like Mask of Death or something. And basically, they end up going on this comedy thing, and he ends up finding another giggy long, and they fight back. And there's the Japanese um, nephew of the bloke who eats the ashes, and basically, he's trying to kill Pill, and you've got all these Pill going around trying to find the person. It's a good film. I yeah, like it, and the ending's actually quite funny, because the police officer keeps warning Jet Li, and in the end it turns out he's actually the killer, and he's so cocky about it, but they actually uh, work together, because he's not a bad guy, he's just trying to get rid of bad pill, like vigilante kind of thing, you know? Um, Jet Li really shines in this, and Eric Sang is always awesome. And it's some really good fight scenes. And Simon Yam is fantastic as usual. I love Simon Yam. I think he's one of the most 
Uh, he's one of the greatest uh, actors of all time in Asian cinema. The Prodigal Son. Yin Bu basically gets taught by a bloke who does opera, uh, Kung Fu, and basically he gets killed and he goes on a revenge and basically ends up working with Samo because Samo is a teacher as well, uh, playing an older gentleman. And basically you have the big fight at the end between him because he starts off as a posh boy, rich boy, and he ends up just becoming humble, basically. Yeah, typical standard Kung Fu film, you know. Uh, going from being a piece of shit over the top to being an extremely good, uh, caring person who actually changes his ways. The Magnificent Butcher. Another great film from Samuel Hung starring the great... Uh, the great Yun Bao, the great uh, Wei Pai as Wong Fei Hong. He played Wong Fei Wong Yun Pai played Wong Fei Hong in all the old movies in Asia in the black and white days, and he plays it in this. And basically, he beats Samo and, and Yun Bu and that. And there's this bit where they go against this Asian guy with a fan, and it's just great. There's all these different things that go on in this movie. It's a very dark martial arts film. But it's a great one. I was so glad when I found out I could buy all these on Blu-ray in Asia. Because even though they don't look the greatest, they are, they are better than the DVD. And it's not just that. They're classics. You know, I grew up on all of these. I had them all on VHS and then DVD and now Blu-ray, you know. People say they're, straight, they're kind of like, you know, like uh, upscale. But you can't expect much from Asians. But I don't really care as long as they look better. Super Cop, which is a, which is also Police Cop, Police Story Three. Um, never seen it, so I can't say anything. Hero, another film that has Donnie Yen in it. Um, not for long though, but it basically has the story of Jet Li's character going to the bloke about the assassins and telling him how he killed them one by one and turned them against each other. And every time he tells him, he gets closer and closer to him. And it turns out that Jet Li didn't kill any of them, but he's one of the assassins. And that's all I'm going to say about it. But it's an awesome film. It's got beautiful colouring. One of the things that irritates the fuck out of me is it says Quentin Tarantino presents. Because it's not nothing to do with Quentin Tarantino. And it's got a good merit on its own, in my view. But that's just a small thing. Uh, the colours in this film are beautiful. Uh, and it just moves so elegantly. I watched it on a pirated, VH, a pirated DVD years ago. It never did it justice. The Blu-ray does. Iron Monkey. This is another great film where um, you have uh, the Iron Monkey and you've got... Um, oh, yeah. And another film for Sam by Quentin Tarantino. I hate that. You've got Iron Monkey who basically steals from the rich and the corrupt government and gives to the poor. And then you've got the you got the dad of the boy who comes along, or I can't remember who he is, but he comes along and basically he ends up helping him, but he doesn't agree with him at first. But he comes around basically. I could have said more about that really, but Dragon Lord basically is about him playing football and this football kind of game which I can't remember what it's called. And basically they get chased and the because this bloke bumps into him and he ends up fighting him and he ends up beating him and that's about it really. You know, it's not the most exciting uh, film in the world, but it's alright. It's supposed to be, I think, the sequel to Young Master. Then we've got a Sniper, which I haven't seen. I haven't seen this yet. And we've got Bad Blood, which is another film I haven't seen yet, but I'm looking forward to it. It's a tried film. Then we've got Audition, which should have been in my horror section. Basically, a guy's looking for a woman online to date after his wife dies. And he looks for him, and he gives auditions, and, the, and this skinny girl basically wins over. And she does things like she puts him in this bag and stuff. And she numbs him because she's going to cut him open. And her son comes home, and he basically kills her, uh, funnily. And it's a real shocking horror film. This is one of those a lot of people can't handle because... They don't want to watch it because it's too scary for them. But to be honest with you, I think it's a really good Takeshi Mike film. Is it, is it? 
Yeah, Takashi Mike. It's a really good Takashi Mike film. Let's go through this. Then we've got Once Upon a Time in China and America, which is a little bit ripped there. It's an extremely bad film, and it's got nothing to do with the actual original series. It's got the same people in, but it's dreadful. We've got Election 2, which is even smarter than Election 1. And I have to admit, I really like this film a lot more. And I, I, I was lucky enough to get this for £4.99 in England when it costs like $30 normally. You've got The Master, which is one of Jet Li's movies where he basically was in L.A. And uh, it was basically the start of his career in, in um, America. But the film itself, to me, sucked. It was horrible. It was just horrible. It was one of those false kind of Asian kind of American films. You know, like when you get an Asian star goes to America and it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like an American movie. It's because it's Asian fired, you know. So not very keen on that movie. Project A1, which isn't a bad uh, Jackie Chan, Sammo Hung and Yoon Byu movie. But it's just, no, this is part two, sorry. Uh, it's an alright film. It's nothing special. Uh, part A basically has a lot of good stunts in it, was, uh, including a bicycle stunt, which is really great, and a clock stunt, which is amazing. It's got Dick Way in it as a pirate. And it's just a plain awesome movie. I don't like it that much, but it's fun and it's good if you like the stunts and that. It's a good movie, but it's just not one of my top ones. Aces Go Places 4, which is a comedy, and it's got, like, James Bond-esque characters in it, which I haven't seen yet, and I probably will soon, but I haven't seen the movie. Again, Aces Go Places 4, another film which I want to see, because obviously it's in the series, but I haven't yet. Rebellion, which was a uh, Asian film I saw, but I'm not very keen on. It's a tried movie, but it's a very slow burner. It's just not very good. Confessions, which was in my horror one, but this is my English edition one, which has uh, a load of bonus features on it. And it's, it's, I haven't seen it, but I think it's going to be a really good film. Another film from Korea, horror one, Cold Fish. I have been really wanting to watch this. I bought a lot of these before I left England because I wanted them. But the problem with them is they're region bait. So it's a real trouble, you know what I mean? <laughs> Wu Tang collect the Wu Tang Iron Fist collection. I got rid of I was able to get rid of I think about eighteen movies because they were all on this. I was so happy with that because I was like finally. I just wish they'd release like twenty five more like this because as much as people complained about the quality you can't expect anything from the quality of these kind of movies because they're so old and they never thought about it. So I say just put 25 on Blu-ray this and just to sell them, you know, because it's going to be fine. It'd be for me and probably most martial arts fans. Drug War, which is a very smart film starring Lewis Ku, where basically it gets in a drug accident and he basically turns on everybody and that's the mat, and then at the end, when he gets away, uh, when he's getting away with it, he basically turns on people, and they basically handcuff themselves to him, so he can't get away, and he ends up getting shot. The Hidden Blade, which is a Japanese import. I've never seen it, so I can't say anything. Again, with Twilight Samurai, I wasn't lucky enough to see this, so I'm looking forward to seeing it soon. A New World, which is a tried movie, but I've, uh, well, not a tried one, it's a Korean kind of tried movie. I haven't seen it, so. The Secret Reunion, or I think, I haven't seen it, so I can't say anything. Heroes 2, which I found incredibly boring, where, where these evil people are looking for them and basically they beat them in the end. Just really boring. Sex and Zen and Sex and Zen Ecstasy. Sex and Zen 1 is the original one. There's two more and then there's the Ecstasy one. There's some great scenes in the in the, in the newer one 
where he wants to get his penis changed, and they knock the guy's penis off, and then they drop the penis they're going to put on there, and the dog bites it and cuts his shot. He ends up getting the donkey penis, and then he goes through the whole way and shoves it up against women's thighs and stuff. It's just really fun, like. And Sex and Zen, the first one, is basically a little bit kinky with a little bit of um, Asian philosophy, basically, and mythology going on. Legend of the Fist, I uh, haven't seen it. Yep, man, haven't seen that yet. Let's pick some of these up. Oh, I, I won't get it here. Back to 1942. Haven't seen that yet. Shaolin, haven't seen that yet, but I like the cover. Let the bullets let the bullets fly, another film I haven't seen yet. Tai Chi Zero and Tai Chi Hero. Haven't seen either of them. Yep, man, too. I saw this. There's a great fight between him and Samo. And to be honest with you, it kind of ends it really well. It ends the two movies really well. And I really liked it. I found it to be a very smart film. But Yip Man films are normally smart and more about chatting and a little bit of action. Which, to be honest with you, you can't expect an old man to be um, fighting continuously. Do you know what I mean? I mean, the actual Yip Man. I don't mean Donnie Yen. The Legend is Bone, Yip Man. 1911, Jackie Chan. The Four. City Under Sage. Is that this code again? No, it's not. Guillotines, Badges of Fury, which is another Jet Li movie, and a Company Man, and then I've got the ultra rare and deleted Battle Royale box set, which I'm not going to pour everything out, but you get a poster, you get lobby cards, you get three cuts of the film, you get a comic, and you get two books. Uh, incredibly good and this goes for ultra money now I was glad to actually get this in perfect condition uh, from England in a box because I was really worried about losing it then we've got there's a toy she collection which is quite chill which I left out the last one which has a really beautiful book in it let me show you so look beautiful book you open it up and it tells you a bit about each film. Thing. Oh. There we go. It tells you about each film with lovely pictures. It's lovely. I really like it. And the actual box has like three discs in one side and it's coloured. It's really nice. It's got 27 discs in it all together. Three, blue, three DVDs per one and one blue, one blue ray that holds three each. And then. This which I avoid from Asia. The, the Forbidden, the, what's it called? The Forbidden Legends Sex and Chopsticks Collection. This was a uh, deleted toe, and uh, inside you get the Forbidden Fib Chopstick movies, one and two, which are basically sex comedies. which are basically sex comedies and uh, let me just move this up a bit which are sex comedies and inside with it you've got a book basically with nakedness and all that in it basically let me find one that isn't naked like this full of pictures like this you know so it's a lovely book and it's a lovely set to own so I was, I've always been happy to have that so yeah, that's my whole Asian film collection at the minute. And I hope you all enjoyed it because it was it. I enjoyed showing you all. And uh, my next one should probably be action, and then probably drama, and then I'll probably get onto the anime, 
and then probably get on to my wrestling collection. So I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope you had fun. Please leave comments in all the videos you watch. I like hearing what you guys think and doubly sure I like giving you guys what you'd like to see. So if there's anything you'd like to see me do, let me know and I'll try my best to do it. Okay, thank, thanks, thanks for watching and take care. Hold on.